and with Unreal Engine 5.2 just a few months old, the folks at Epic Games have released the roadmap for Unreal Engine 5.3. This in its sense is coming with some very interesting features which cuts across rendering, world building, procedural content generation, PCG, which made its first debut in Unreal Engine 5.2, developer integration, platform, character and animation, virtual production, simulation, audio, system, modeling tools, content pipeline, framework, and engine contents and templates. And with what we have here, the folks at Epic Games are more or less pushing Unreal Engine to become a more standard DCC tool compared to just being a rendering engine for either virtual production, games, or even animation. And for Nanite, there's a couple of improvements that we have here, as Nanite now supports explicit tangents in data format and runtime. There's also an experimental version of Nanite Spline Meshes that is coming, and for performance improvements, we're getting a 20% speed improvement for rasterized and max fall ages. And in terms of selecting nanite objects for 5.3, nanite object selection will no longer have flickering with TSR or TAA enabled. Nanite ISM slash fall age instance selection, we simply have several issues in a detail has been fixed and they've added a fallback target setting to nanite static meshes. Lumen, on the other hand, is having a couple of interesting updates as Lumen reflections now support more than one bounces with hardware retracing. Lumen Reflections can also be used without Lumen GI for games and applications which uses static light but wishes to scale up in reflection quality beyond reflection captures. They've also fixed Material AO and this was previously applied on top of emissive or direct lighting. This and more is coming to Lumen. There's also updates to the orthographic rendering. The sparse volume textures is currently in experimental. And for Path Tracer, there's a couple of improvement and experimental stuff coming to the Path Tracer, which includes that the Path Tracer now has initial support for tracing heterogeneous volumes such as smoke, fire, and cloud. Substrate material, which is currently in experimental, are now supported in the Path Tracer. Subsurface scattering efficiency has been improved. Deep buffer decal shading nodes in material graphs are now supported and post-processed material buffers now have additional outputs for use specifically with the path tracer and now accessible through a new node in the material graph path tracer buffer texture. And this can provide data for radians, denoise radians, albedo, normal, and variance. There's also additional updates coming to substrate and we're getting improvement to visual shadow maps. Here, which is becoming a big thing in Unreal Engine, is having some interesting updates as well, as Groom Steering Support has now been added for Groom and Groom Binding Assets. They've also added a continuous level of detail for scaling and improving performance when there are a lot of Groom covering a small portion of the screen. There's also a new experimental support for the hair strands, which now includes support for writing custom attributes. And for sure, in terms of world building, there's also a couple of updates coming to this, and PCG is having a very interesting set of updates as well. As PCG, which is the procedural content generation, is a brand new implementation in Unreal Engine, this for sure is taking flight and lots of creators are excited about it. And in terms of platform, Nanite is now supported on Mac M2 devices. This is definitely going to be a big win for those using Mac devices as Unreal Engine 5.3 now brings production ready support to Nanite rendering technology on Apple Silicon M2 devices. This support is enabled by default in the Unreal Engine Mac OS libraries downloadable from Epic Games Launcher. Whereas the Experimental 5.2 was only available when you're building from GitHub, it's also quite impressive to see that character and animation is having a couple of interesting updates as well, and this includes animation retargeting, animation authoring, skeletal editor which is currently in Experimental, and I think lots of people would love this. The idea that you can literally go in and start doing a bit of paint waiting would make a lot of sense. And like I mentioned earlier, I think the idea behind this particular release is Epic Games are looking at making Unreal Engine, a standard DCC tool where you can create most of your art, auto, and deploy within the engine. As the skeletal editor is coming with some impressive updates, which includes converting static meshes to skeletal meshes, creating and editing skeletons, which employs the idea of adding bones, removing bones, orienting and editing these bones, and also mirroring, which is literally more like the basics of you rigging or creating an amateur for a character. At the same time, users will be able to create skin weights, which is pretty impressive, paint weights with brush tools, edit weights on versic selections, flood, relax, prune, average, normalize operations, and mirror those weights. This combined with some of the rigging tools that are now available in Unreal Engine would now make artists simply bring in their models from ZBrush and rig them directly in Unreal Engine. 
For virtual production, there's a couple of interesting things coming. Simulation is also having a huge update as the Chaos Panel Cloth Editor Foundation is currently in experimental. Chaos ML Cloth is also coming with some interesting updates as well. And one other part which I'm super excited about is seeing UV tools in Epic Games Unreal Engine. So we've already seen a couple of modeling tools, we've talked about it, we've done a couple of videos about them. But it's really, really cool to see that modeling workflow is coming in its beta. And we're also seeing some interesting modeling tools as well. And for UV, UV tools are also coming in Unreal Engine and we'll probably make a video about it. So for the UV tools, we're getting some UV editor distortion display and UV automatic layout. And in terms of the modeling workflow, modeling workflow will be showing up with a set of new UIs, some tool presets and element selection. And for modeling tools, we'll be getting some spline tools, some element selection and manipulation tools, and some other improvements which deals with editing your normals, welding, baking and generating polygroups. With content pipeline, we already know that you can import USD and USD animations into Unreal Engine and seeing the fact that Material X is also coming to Unreal Engine is something to be happy about. And speaking about Material X, for those who would like to get free materials, I'm going to put a link in the description that will take you over to a platform where you can get free materials and use them as you choose. So from framework to engine content and templates, all the way to rendering, Epic Games Unreal Engine is looking impressive. And of course, a huge shout out to the folks at Epic Games for making the Unreal Engine 5.3 roadmap public. So this is it. Which of these features and sections of Unreal Engine are you super excited about and can't wait to try? Tell us about them in the comment section. And for sure, if you'd like to read up on these, links to this is also going to be in the description, so do well to check it out. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace. Yeah, you better.